Thank you, Pepe, for the introduction. Uh, right. So just to give a brief introduction about ourselves, uh, we're Reliance Games, and as any gaming company, you know, we're known by our games. So the kind of games that we make are in the action, you know, 3D uh, games. Uh, most of them are based on Hollywood IPs. So some of our big games are like Real Steel, World Robot Boxing, uh, Pacific Rim, After Earth. And this year, we're going to release around eight more games, three of them again on the action category, and around, you know, five uh, new publishing games. So, uh, in the presentation, we're going to cover these topics. Basically, uh, you know, there's a 20, 30 years of legacy of console games, and there are a lot of designers and the creative team from uh, those industry, you know, that is coming onto the mobile platform, and they're trying to sink in and understand the whole freemium uh, part of things, you know, understand the mobile customer, and there is a big uh, disconnect, you know, especially which happens when creative teams and the, and the product teams and the business teams who sit together. So this presentation actually just uh, happened because of a fight, actually, between uh, the creative team and uh, the product team. So we had hired a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, game designers from console, and, uh, they, and there was this constant, you know, friction about why freemium, you know, uh, they had this whole idea that freemium is evil, and, you know, uh, it, it just, just kept getting, uh, you know, pretty bad. So uh, as a product and business team, you know, we thought, okay, we need to step back and just go back into, you know, history a bit and just see uh, what is it that takes to build great games and why it is, you know, there should be a mindset change to, uh, for, for mobile. So for that, uh, the first part, we have to see all these devices with respect to time. Now, I'm gonna show how the key building blocks for games today, you know, are, are defining the way the games are being made. So if there are a lot of things which go into making games, however, if you, you know, sift through the whole, uh, uh, you know, the whole lot, you, you'll come across, there are just two, two key factors which are intrinsic to the platform which help you build games. So, you know, they're across the whole uh, spectrum, there's hardware and there's control. Now these two things, you know, are basically, uh, the key parameters for building games, and that is in your control. That is given to you, and you do, you know, uh, base your games around them. But there are some external factors. Now, in today's day and world, because of mobile and because of, you know, broadband, the network plays an important factor, but that is not in your control. So, that's an external factor. And the last thing which the player controls is time. He decides how much time he's going to, you know, be spending on playing your games. And that is the key thing which is going to contribute to making great games. Now, if we were to map and compare all these platforms together and you know, trying to map out the differences on these four parameters, so we did a small exercise as Reliance Games and uh, we said, okay, let us look at the four platforms which are console, PC, tablets, and smartphones and then rate them across these four parameters. So we said, okay, Let's, on a scale of one to 10, let's rate consoles and PCs. If you look at, you know, they pretty match up. They are, you know, cutting edge. There's actually a lot of hardware and tech which goes into the latest gen uh, uh, hardware which is currently present. And, and if you see tablets and smartphones, they are there. However, uh, you know, they still need to catch up in terms of the power that a console can give. So we rated them seven. If you look at controls, you know, uh, all the joysticks and the joy pads, you know, they got 12 buttons, all the combinations that are at your disposal, you know, to make games and the complexity that can come from it. Uh, again, you know, so we rated 10 for both console and PCs. Uh, but tablet and smartphones, you know, there are no controls. You know, this is a simple touch screen. You can try fitting in a D-pad, but then, you know, you, you know the experience that comes along with it. So we rated two. Time. Now again, when you play on a console and a PC, you decide, okay, I'm going to play this game for two hours. I'm going to play a Call of Duty, you know, for, for, you know, for the weekend, for five hours at a stretch. Same for PC, you know, League of Legends or, or World of Warcraft. But tablets and, and smartphones, it sort of goes down a little bit. Uh, especially since these devices are mobile, you know, uh, it takes uh, time away from the user. So he tries to find opportunities to play these games. 
So, you know, tablets are still better off, most, more or less in the, let's say, home and office environment, but smartphones, since they are more mobile, you know, we rated them one and four respectively. Network, dedicated uh, bandwidth, you know, which is present in uh, wired connections at home for consoles and PCs, so, you know, it's much more stable. Tablets, because of mobility, you know, it sort of goes down, and for smartphones, you know, it, it, because of 3G, it goes down even more, so two. So now, if you look at, on this graph, you know, the, and you compare the four, you see smartphone are actually the weakest of all the f four. Now, now that actually makes probably this the worst platform to make games on. It is the most challenging, and you know, it doesn't give you all the abilities that the other platforms give. However, now if you were to look at all these four platforms again, and the kind of games that you can make, the typical casual, mid-core, core categories. And again, you had to you know, map it against this graph. You'll see you know, casual requires a little bit of little hardware, you know, recent little bit of controls, not so much time, and little network. You know. Now you move up to mid-core. You know, it requires a little more hardware, a little more com complexity, more time per session, and you know, much more stable connection. Core. Again, it requires maximum stuff. You can build it to the max ability. Uh, you know, most complex controls, a lot of combinations. Uh, you know, you need to have sessions which last hours and hours altogether, and you know, a dedicated, stable network connection. Now, as per this graph, what comes comes across, you know, is mobile platforms are best suited for mid-core to casual experiences. And I'm saying experiences and not games. And I, I'll explain it further in my slides. The simple reason why smartphones, and I'm just stating the obvious out here, you know, uh, are different, and, and it's because of, you know, it's gaming on the go. Now, what it really means is, you know, game discovery is on the go. I have two minutes. Let me quickly check out some new games. You know, I don't plan to, fi you know, uh, find a XYZ game. I have two minutes. Let me quickly download it. You know, uh, again, nothing is planned. If it's uh, if you're in a bus or you know, if you're in a line and you see, okay, this is a great game or somebody else is playing it, you just happen to see it, you know, you just want to download it then and there. Gameplay is on the go. Again, you know, the typical Starbucks line test, you know, can you stand on the line while waiting for your coffee? Can you just play a couple of rounds? So the game design has to be based on short, short sessions. Purchases, again, nobody plans, I'm going to spend $10 today in a game. I'm going to spend $20 in a game today, or a $1 purchase, you know. It's an impulse buy. They have to, you know, uh, buy it right then and there when they want it. So the monetization design should facilitate or evoke impulse purchases, you know. You have to ensure that your games basically allow the user to buy when he wants and uh, whenever, wherever he wants. Now, this basically, you know, brings about smartphones as a very deceptive device. You know, it's, it's a very powerful device. You know, it, it gives you an illusion of power, but it takes away all that in one second. In one call, you know, your gaming session is over. And you might not come back to it. You might come back or you might just think, well, let me just quickly check a mail, let me just check my WhatsApp message, and there it is, you know, it's gone. So these two minutes are actually, as a developer, you know, are your real enemy. Now, uh, so what do you do, you know? The best thing that you can do is make them your friend. How do you do that? Now, if you were to again compare traditional and mobile games, you'll see that in traditional games, you know, game design is focused on giving, you know, uh, building up for a few euphoric moments after some hours and hours of sessions, you know, and, you know, it gives you a high after, let's say, a two hour of gameplay session. The win condition, you know, and, and whereas in mobile, it, uh, it actually needs to be f few of these euphoric sessions, but then in those two minutes. So you've got to keep bundling in. You've got to give them a high in those two minutes. The win condition is based on skill. Now, because of the complex control system, because of the you know, uh, kind of game designs that go into it, to win, you need to be highly skilled. So there's a learning curve the user has to follow. But in mobile, it should be all about decision-making and strategy, you know. 
uh, or chance. That's why you see, you know, uh, ca you know, casual games which are based on casinos or or even Candy Crush. It's, it's basically a chance game. You know, you don't know how your board is going to, uh, uh, you know, be built. So it's it's some some users can take hundred gameplay sessions to cross a level, whereas uh, uh, you know the same level can be crossed uh, by a few users in, in in the first or sec first or the second session itself. In traditional platforms, gameplay is everything. You know, it's it's all about you know the, again the complexity of of going through those levels, you know, and and solving those puzzles. But in mobile, it's just incidental. All your decision making and strategy should have already decided the outcome of the gameplay moment. So you should get a high as a user based on the decisions you have taken and feel good about it. Yes, I took the right decision to upgrade that particular weapon. I took the right decision you know, to uh, spend and buy a particular item to win in that particular uh, gameplay session. So uh, this is the end of the first section. So you know, time is your enemy. You've got to make it your friend. So now let's look at player types, again, based on time. So, uh, you know, this is a definition you can find on the net. You know, a core gamer is someone who arranges their schedule around their games. Mid-core, they fi arrange their gaming around their daily schedule. And casual ga gamers are those who entertain self whenever times present themselves. Now, if you look at traditional games, you know, it's eight to 10 hours of gameplay time, you decide, okay, I'm going to make 10 levels of a Call of Duty game, which is each level is going to give me, you know, an hour of gameplay. And uh, and the way it is played is, you know, five to 10 sessions, you know, two hours, one to two hours each. And that's called intensity of play. Now, if you look at the same mobile game, uh, maybe it could be a shooting game, but it's the same eight to 10 hours, but then in hundreds of sessions. And that's, density of play. Now, there's a difference between the two. And there was this research done by Immersive Research, and uh, it was actually something which I found in GDC uh, this, this year. Uh, they had a very interesting slide, and this is what they said as per the research, and uh, they had you know, evaluated a lot of games. And they found that uh, they defined a moderate player as someone who's less than 10 sessions, but you know, they found that they'd contribute to 83% of the audience, but only 3% of the revenue. Uh, engaged user, you know, is between somewhere between 10 to 49 sessions, 10 percent of the audience, and 13 percent of the revenue. Extreme user is 50 plus sessions, but only 7 percent of the audience, but 84 percent of the revenue. Now that's what you know uh, got me thinking, and that's where you know we I thought, okay, let's now look at redefining these players. So instead of calling them casual players, you now let's call them moderate. Instead of calling them mid mid-core, let's call them engage, and instead of core, let's call them extreme. So define your players by density of play and not intensity. So now let's, let's look at the traditional game types versus the new game types. Now, again, you know, traditionally, you know, developers decide on other platforms, okay, I'm going to make a core game. It's going to have a deep narrative. You know, graphics are going to be rich and heavy. It's going to be high skill, complex. Content is going to be there providing hours and hours of gameplay sessions. Mid-core functional, you know, with limited depth, graphics mid to heavy uh, skill, medium content providing few hours of gameplay. Casual session, again, you know, it just uh, keep going there in terms of, you know, cosmetic or almost no narrative, mid to light graphics, little or no skill, content providing short bursts of gameplay. And a classic mistake which happens, and it happened with us also as a company when we started you know, into the action genre. Uh, let's make a console game for mobile, you know. Why? Because there exists a large you know, core base which is playing Call of Duty, Battlefield, Need for Speed, and they're hungry for core content on mobile. Sounds like a good plan, you know. And when you release the game, find out what happened, they just didn't have the time to play the game. Well, it seems, uh, you know, mobile casual really is the king. But does it mean that you should only make puzzle and match three type of games? No, of course not. But before you decide what kind of games to make, and I'll explain you know, how else you can uh, go about doing that, you know, there's a basic thing which uh, you know, developers need to understand, especially when they are transitioning from the uh, console to the mobile platform. And that is 
you got to respect the device. This is not a mini console, you know, so don't even think about it just because it offers the power of, uh, you know, all that tech packed into a small gadget, uh, it doesn't mean that it's a console game. You have to understand that this is the most dominating screen in our lives today, and it will continue to be so in the future. You know, this device actually controls you and not the other way around. It is the most viral medium today. I mean, I mean, everyone has a phone, you're playing a flappy bird, and boom, you know, everyone has started playing around you. You have to be aware and accept its flaws. Now, it's almost like a marriage, you know. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you've got to not try to change uh, your partner. You have to understand. And you've got to make games high on its strengths and then work around the weaknesses. That's, that's the key. So at Reliance Games, you know, we call it uh, casual core. Uh, these are the new uh, definitions that we've arrived at. It's basically the outer shell is like a core game, and, uh, but the focus is all, all in the meta game and the decision making. So a good example would be a CSR racing, where it looks like you know, a heavy game or a deer hunter. Uh, and the win condition is, again, a very casual experience. So you're in and out of the actual gameplay experience. 10 seconds, and you're out of it. Uh, typical ca you know, categories can be sports, racing, FPS. In casual mid-core, again, the same principles apply. And typical category can be you know, the ones which uh, you see in top <laughs> grossing nowadays, Tower Sold, RPGs. Puzzle match trees. So casual is a flavor, and you know try and innovate in casual core and casual mid core. So now uh, let's just take these two together and see how they map against each other. So traditionally, if you were to plot all the you know players on an x-axis based on the number of hours, and the games uh, uh, on the y-axis uh, based on their difficulty level. Uh, you know, you typically try to say, okay, my casual user is a, you know, a woman, you know, in the mid 30s, who's playing, uh, you know, games at, at home. You know, your mid-core user is somebody from 24 to 35, you know, who's, uh, who has, who's working and who basically finds time and schedule, you know, in the nights or in the weekends. My core users are, you know, teens, you know, 15 to 24, and, you know, they are going to play this game aggressively. And revenue is from your left to right, you know. That's how the core games make the most, of the most money, you know, the Call of Duties, the Battlefields, Halo, and the casual games, not so much. But now, if you were to plot the same thing in mobile, the two things which change, instead of hours, it's based on number of sessions, and instead of uh, mid-core and core, it's casual, mid-core, and co casual core. Out here, the way it stacks up, everybody is a casual player. All of them are looking for casual experiences. You know, you don't have to differentiate based on their age or you know uh, how do they uh, stack up in terms of which geography they're coming from. All it matters is how they are playing the game. You know, how many sessions are they spending in playing the game? Casual midco, of course, the audience now the funnel starts decreasing. Maybe you know you'll have a lot of audiences playing it moderately, and uh, the ex engage in extreme. You know, keep going down. And for casual core, the same thing. But for in terms of revenue, it's bottom to up now. You know, the most extreme players are going to pay the most, and the most moderate players are going to you know pay the least. In fact, uh, here's a small tip. So I don't know if uh, uh, next time when you're doing your user ac acquisition, you can check with your ad networks if they can help you acquire users based on number of sessions. So you know, uh, if you're doing your Facebook. Uh, 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 you know, media buying, you know, check with them, you know, is it possible to buy, you know, find users who have played more than 20 sessions or around 25 sessions or 50 sessions, you know, instead of, uh, you know, uh, 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 let's say women in the age group of 35 or, or males in the age group of uh, 18 to 20, because it doesn't matter. And uh, try it out and see, you know, if, if it works for you. So just a quick summary. Uh, the four points, time is your enemy, make it your friend, redefine based on density and not intensity of play, innovate in casual core and casual mid-core, and break away from stereotyping your players. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah. 
Um, I'm sure at, at Reliance Games you publish a lot of titles. Um, could you give us an insight as to what kind of games are more popular in the Indian market? Is it like racing or puzzle or like action sort of games, which is more popular, like a average percentage? Right. So, um, as as Reliance Games, we actually focus on the global market more because of our relationship with you know in the Hollywood space, and we build games across uh, uh, different countries. Uh, but just from a general knowledge perspective, you know, in India, basically what works is cricket and you know racing. So, yeah. Yeah, it's mostly the light games, basically. You know, because the network is a connectivity, you want to try to get the games more to the casual side, more to, you know, less than 10 to the But that market is growing like crazy, and uh, the casual component is going to be becoming a big component. Yeah, I mean, they do, uh, they do like sports category as well, quite a bit, as you mentioned. So yeah. you're saying how um, the success you're seeing in mobile right now is with games with little or no skill. Um, right. And we're seeing a lot of companies in this space getting VC funding based on like MOBAs and these kind of high skill games where it's um, almost like the porting of these hardcore PC titles to tablets or mobile. Uh, what do you think of that model? Do you think, and so far it hasn't succeeded. And uh, we've tried it in the past. You know, uh, we've done uh, shooter games uh, which required two-handed controls multiple button combinations, you know, we've done fighting games. Uh, but uh, what we eventually found out that after the initial set of users who will try your games, the core users are difficult to acquire. You know, it, uh, it's the casual users who actually uh, dominate and it's easier, they are easier to acquire. But then we also found out, for example, we did a country testing in one of our games today which is called Drones. You know, it's actually a, a shooter game. And we found that in the tablet, there was high intensity of play. People were playing the game for 20 plus minutes. That's high you know, for, for, for mobile. But we found that iPhone users were playing the same game for around you know, f five to 10 minutes. And we found the iPhone users paying more than the, uh, you know, the tablet players. Now that's because you know, they were uh, breaking the sessions uh, a lot more than the tablet users. The tablet users were uh, burning through the content a lot more. Uh, which means that they didn't have the need to upgrade, they didn't have the need to, you know, mo uh, you know, feel uh, uh, to purchase. Whereas the tab, uh, uh, phone users, they were trying to, you know, uh, uh, skip the core loop by doing the purchases and, you know, uh, trying to upgrade their weapons because they didn't have the time to play the game so much. So that's our ex experience and our example. You know. And also, you know, one of the components. So this was study was done based on top two, you know, the top two hundred crossing category, right? We actually went and looked at it. Seen at the top 20 hasn't changed much, you know. Besides, the only person who's been able to do it is Kim Kardashian. I'm just uh, <laughs> but besides that, that is, you know, it's been a pretty stable category. Those are the games that are doing it. And if you look at it, what works in that category is, is pretty much the same thing. I mean, not a big shift uh, as it happens on the download. So, download does not translate into revenue. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Sandeep and Amit. <laughs> thank you so much. Um,